Welcome to The Real Review, sponsored by Parametric and Lazy Ape Studios, where you get some of the latest happenings, real thoughts, and perspectives in the world of film and television. And this is our coming soon and new segment where we actually have some news this week. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I saw you over there giggling. Yeah, I'm a laughing giggler. Laughing because of our stupid noises we make before yes. we start our recording. Yeah, if only you could tune in approximately 15 seconds before we start recording, your I life know. would be entirely changed. We're sadly funnier when we're not recording ourselves. Yes. That's probably the case for most people, but it, that's, that's not okay. the case for us. But yeah. So we're going to be talking about two films today. Dose. We're going to be talking about Murder on the Orient Express, as well as Daddy's Home 2. Daddy's Home 2. Yep. Both coming out this weekend. We've got a little bit of news, uh, mostly Disney flared news. Yep. Yeah. Not necessarily putting Disney in the best light this week, but we'll, we'll, we're going to get there. So, yeah. All right. Let's start off with Murder on the Orient Express. There's been a murder <laughs> on the Savannah. Murder. On the Savannah. <laughs> a murder. Yeah. Talk like molasses in a minute. Molasses. I so, can't do it. Yeah. This is a uh, remake of the Sydney, Sydney Lumet classic, which I believe came out in the 1970s, 1974. Um, so this film is uh, the synopsis for this is what starts out as a lavish train ride through Europe quickly unfolds into one of the most stylish <laughs> Stylish, really? Stylish, <laughs> suspenseful, and thrilling mysteries ever told. From the novel by best-selling author Agatha Christie, Murder on the Orient Express tells the tale of 13 strangers stranded on a train where everyone's a suspect. One man must race against time to solve the puzzle before the murderer strikes again. It's directed by Kenneth Branagh. Uh, it's store, it stars a lot of people. Uh, Penelope Cruz, Johnny Depp, Judy Dench, Kenneth Branagh, William Defoe, Josh Gad, Michelle Pfeiffer... Uh, just tons and tons of people. Ray there. Skywalker. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Sure. Throw him <laughs> in the mix. So, uh, or her, sorry. Her. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> She's in there as well. Uh, so yeah. What are your expectations? What are your thoughts? I don't know. Okay. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm interested. I want to know. I, I'm, I always like a good mystery, you know? So yeah. we'll see. I'm, I'm going to see it this weekend. So I don't feel like as weird as it sounds, I don't feel like this is the era for this kind of film. Because this film really is much more about story and character development, less than it is about sensationalization, mm -hmm. stylization, and it says the most sty like stylish thing here. I feel like they're at the moment from the trailer, mm -hmm. they're very much going style over substance, and this film is not that kind of a film. It's a mystery of intrigue about a bunch of characters with very deep stories. Now, one thing it has working for it is the fact that it's based upon pre-existing material material yeah so there is that depth that's kind of already there based upon that but it really doesn't seem like they're uh, in in my opinion studio films these days do not tend to take advantage of that type of stuff right they really it really felt like with the music and with the way they were shooting things that they're trying to make it this like edgy kind of like whoa in your face like oh crazy kind of looking yeah. thing so it just really didn't do much for me. I keep forgetting uh, Johnny Depp is in this. Yeah, he looked really silly to me when I. First yeah, I don't. I don't know. He's not doing well. No. I don't know if you saw that article the other day at the premiere uh, of this. I believe he was actually drunk and. Are you serious? Yeah. No, I didn't hear that. Yeah. And oh he my was, gosh. Like, having handlers like carry him around basically Ugh, and stuff. No. So, yeah, I mean he's been his films have been kind of slipping. And stuff, yeah. Which is, I mean, that's an end of an era in yeah. a sense. I mean, Johnny Depp has always been like way yeah. up there. Oh, my goodness. Well, Hollywood in general, I mean, just to be honest, there's a lot of stars. I mean, they can't really bank on any, these days any star necessarily just guaranteeing a, right. a film's going to do well. Right, so, yeah. I mean, you look at that with The Mummy. Tom Cruise isn't just that. Uh, I shouldn't say that internationally <laughs> it did well, but like domestically, no, you can't really bank yeah. on anybody. Yeah, you would have thought a little while ago Jennifer Lawrence, but she just had the, the flop with mother. 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 So <laughs> it was just scaring people continually with that one. So, yeah. um <laughs> Yeah, so I, and I would say this type of a film would intrigue me generally mm -hmm. if I felt like they weren't going for that yeah. stylistic option. I like the idea of it being intriguing and kind of getting to the characters and mystery. Yeah, so. there's some good talent. That's I mean that's the good thing to look for. I think Kenneth Branagh is a good director too. Yeah, yeah. Daisy Ridley. Yeah, forgot to mention. Well, I said Ray Skywalker. Right, but specifically by yeah. name, Daisy Ridley. I was being facetious, I people. Yeah. So <laughs> what uh, on a scale of one to six thousand? Six. Okay, one to ten. One six. to ten, six. Okay. Or 600, whatever. Yeah. I'd put myself closer to like a five. Okay. Probably just oh, I gotcha. because of the stylistic things. Maybe I'll do like a Murder on the Art Express, Express weekend. I'll like on Saturday, I'll watch the original, and then on Sunday, I'll go. Ah, uh, double watch up, the, huh? The remake or the new one. Yeah. I gotcha. Something like that. 
Well, it's all good. Cool. Let's move on to our next one then, uh, which is also, it's not a remake, but it's a sequel. Yep. Uh, this one's Daddy's Home 2. Do you have the synopsis open for that? Do you want to? Yeah. Let me do the honors here. Daddy's Home 2. Brad and Dusty must deal with their intrusive fathers during the holidays. And the sequel, obviously, from Daddy's Home 1. Um, stars directed by Sean Anders. Um, stars Linda Cardellini, Mel Gibson, Mark Wahlberg, Will Ferrell, John Cena, John Lithgow. Um, this, I, have you seen the first one? Nope. I haven't seen the first one either. Nope. I, nope, 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 nope. nope. I chuckled <laughs> in this trailer a few times. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with Mel Gibson for some reason. Okay. And John Lithgow. And, because Mark Wahlberg and Will Ferrell by themselves, I can see some chemistry and there wasn't that much appeal for me to see it the first go around. But with Mel Gibson and John Lithgow in this, there's that, like they, like that first scene where you see them like meeting each other in the airport. Yeah. And even the banner, if you pull it up on like Rotten Tomatoes, <laughs> yeah. Lithgow it's and Lithgow and Will, Will Ferrell like kissing. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. There's something really, really funny about it, at least to me. Um, I don't know. Will Ferrell has to do that in every movie though. Like in every movie, he kisses a guy on the lips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's in his contract. It's pretty much. Yeah. Tom Cruise has to run. uh, What's his name? Has to pee. (laughs) Who? Uh, Crud. Who are you talking about right now? Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. I must have 15, 16 Dr. Peppers. (laughs) (laughs) Every, I'm telling you, there's always a, he either like he has to pee or he does pee almost in every movie that he's in. It's just his thing. Uh, yeah, and Will Ferrell has to kiss guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so I, it's his shtick. I don't know. I'm not really. I mean, just as a whole, I'm not like because I haven't seen the first one. I'm not wanting to race out and see this thing. But uh, I don't think you have needed to. I chuckled a few times. I'm actually more excited for this, sadly, than I am Murder on the Orient Express. Okay. Even okay. though plot wise, I would rather see and enjoy Murder. Right. I just think this one, for whatever reason, hits. What me. if Murder on the Orient Express was the crossover with be. this, and Will Ferrell it's was not, the murderer? It's not. Not gonna be. And John Lithgow. It's never gonna happen. As the Trinity Killer. No. Okay. Nope. nope. I'm just shaking my head. Nope, because it's not gonna happen. <laughs> okay. Well, hey. Yeah. You know what? Just leave me alone to my imagination and my fun dreams. Fair enough. Okay. I like. I mean, I like uh, that Mel Gibson's kind of the bad guy in this. I he's kind of like the bad guy. Like he's kinda... slowly working his way back into like being okay on screen, right. you know, and being in Hollywood because of all the stuff that he yeah, was yeah, involved yeah. in and did. So it's kind of funny that one of his mer- first major roles back in a in a you know, big studio film yeah. would, would be he's the sort of the jerk, yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. know, kind of guy. So it fits him. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I just think it looks kind of funny. So John funny. Cena's in it. I don't know what role he's got. But, yeah, I'm not really sure either. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, we'll, we'll check it out. My excitement levels. 6.5. Yeah, I'm about yeah. there. That's about 6.5-ish. Yeah. Okay. So not cool. super high, but yeah. So we're going to talk about a little bit of news as well. Uh-huh. Like I mentioned, some Disney stuff has been going on. Uh, why don't we start with your yeah. news article, so, and then we'll move into mine. Right now, there are some like, um, rumors circulating the entertainment industry about Disney trying to acquire or purchase 20th Century Fox. Mm. Uh, and this is basically their their movie and television like entertainment division. Right. Um, wow. Yeah. This I don't even know though. I feel like there's so many r- ramifications other than just than just the obvious of like you know what properties Disney would then own. I think this would make Disney so massive. Hmm. Um. That I don't think any like an entertainment monopoly. Like yeah. <laughs> like it, I don't even know if that's a thing. But it isn't. Um, but. It would have been. Yeah. It would be, I guess. Um, yeah. And uh, what's more interesting is when you, I mean, because with that would mean that all the X-Men would be the property, all Fantastic Four would be the property, any other Marvel property that they yep. own. Plus, you'd have additional things like Alien, uh, yeah. James Bond, right? Yeah. Would come oh, under there. that's with Sony, I think. Is it Sony now? I think that's with Sony, yeah. Oh, I thought it was Sony. But, yeah, I think but, Bond is with Sony. I gotcha. But, I mean, they, they would definitely take over a huge swath of be famous crazy. properties and stuff. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, but I don't have a problem with it necessarily because I feel like Hollywood has yeah. sold out so much anyway. Yeah. And at least with Disney, they, they do try to listen yeah. to fan perspective and try to make things like with star Wars, mm-hmm. you know, they, they really did bring fresh blood in. They yeah. brought some fresh talents and ideas. So I, I, I'm not necessarily yeah. against it. I would have thought, I'm yeah. not against it either. I just, I just wow. That's like, I feel like that's just such a huge thing, you know. 
uh, kind of almost the prospect of when Disney was like four years ago, hey, we're going to buy uh, Lucasfilm. <laughs> yeah. You know, like what? <laughs> yeah. That one made sense more, I think, yeah. to me, because it's more of a That's like specific very, niche, yeah. you know, universe thing. This one's like everything. Right. They're They're buying a bunch of different niches and they tend to buy products, not products, I should say, industries or yeah. ideas that are kind of specifically targeted towards like generations like a pixar yeah like a pixar's kids yeah, and, and then, then like you know the buy, film, then. right so they'll buy like things that are targeting specific this is a very much more generalized right. all age groups and all fans right good fall because they own is it espn disney owns espn yes so they they own that and so it's like they own specifically targeted type yeah. products I keep saying products. I think that's a good way of putting it. Though. Sure, sure. Um, so this is very general. Yeah, so, I'd be interested to see what happens. It's a bold move that. by Disney. <laughs> For sure. Um, Mr. Moneybags was like, I need to spend some money on That could have some crazy ramifications for future Marvel films. Yeah, actually, it should be, oh boy, let's go <laughs> buy some some movies. Pluto? That's my Mickey impersonation. <laughs> that's not very good. It's mediocre. Yeah. Yeah. It's all good, though. Yeah, do you have a good Disney? We can practice that, no. You don't have a... Well, hi, your kids! <laughs> That's not bad. I can't do it. Anyways. That's not too bad. What What is the... <laughs> Disney... Disney... <laughs> That's my thought. Of that. You know, we don't mind this, That's but... I was choking. Why don't you yeah. break down the next one? Because I kind of don't know the details on this. Yeah, What's... so this one, like I said, Disney's not necessarily being made to look in the best light um, at this point. There's a lot of reviewers that are actually getting up in arms about this. So Disney has released a... Rider of sorts, which which if you're not familiar with a rider, it's kind of like a contract that will go with not just films. It can happen with musical artists, basically anything that's on demand and mm-hmm. people are wanting to show or make use of. You can have a rider type contract, mm-hmm. which you will sign as an agreement to allow this thing to be shown or used or something like that. And so right. Disney has a rider contract that they are now pushing for The Last Jedi the next Star Wars film that is coming out. And the reason it's making waves okay. is because they are doing a couple things. One, probably the biggest is, they are pushing the studios to, or sorry, the 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 theaters that want to show this movie. Yeah. They have to agree to a larger percentage of the profits from 55 up to 65 now, percent of the profits going to Disney from ticket sales. The last idea, yeah. Right. Wow. So, Prior to that, it was always 55. So you wonder why your concession costs are so high. It's because generally most films that go into a theater, if you're familiar with the distribution system, mm-hmm. they don't always go into every theater. Obviously, there's usually contracts that are penned out. Right. Like a There's like a person that figures out, okay, what film is going to go into which theaters? How much are we going to take of a chunk of it? The chunk is generally about 55%. Right. It's kind of the agreed upon amount. Okay. They're saying 65. We wow. want 65 because this film is going to be so popular. We believe that we deserve 65%. Additionally, they're saying that theaters have to mandate that the theater is in all all theaters that show it have to stick it in for like a, I think, at least a four week period. Okay. Which is generally much less for I some heard it's theaters. It's two. It's generally two mm-hmm. mandated that it has to be. That's like that special engagement right. where they took, like, you know, certain things. That's yeah. that two week period. So they're mandating, though, that theaters now leave this in theaters. And if they fail to do so, then it actually bumps up the percentage of ticket sales up to uh, the percentage chunk they get to 70%. Whoa. So they get even more of a chunk of money. So there's a lot of people that are up in arms about this because Disney's kind of, it's a bit underhanded in a lot of ways because they know that they've got a really good property. They know that they've got something they want. So why don't, like, they know that they have something that people want, I should say. So why don't they just... Um, I wonder why they're doing this. Like, I maybe they, don't maybe know. they're trying to get the cash together by 20th Century Fox. I really, honestly, don't know. <laughs> I mean, Avatar is Avatar Disney? No, that's that's Fox. Oh, that is Fox. Yeah, so maybe it is the 20th Century Fox. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, but it's really a it's a tough thing. There's a lot of reviewers out now that are saying that they're going to uh, not release reviews for it early or not release reviews at all. They're getting a lot of pushback from theater owners and things like that. A lot of theaters are saying they're just not going to run it. Mm. It's difficult, especially for some theaters that are in like smaller places or yeah. smaller runs because they need to have a constant stream of films coming in there in order to get new people in seats because you can only show a theater for so long before the, your market is saturated if you're smaller. Um, so it's just difficult and it's been really tough. Uh, so there's a lot yeah. of people. So I don't know. Thoughts? Uh, yeah. Correction. Um, Avatar is actually Disney. 
That's what I thought. Yeah. So I'm bad. like, maybe they're raising, maybe they're raising the billion dollars yeah. that they're putting towards it. James like Cameron that. needs his budget. Yeah. He's like, guys, I got a great idea for that billion dollar. Yeah, yeah. He's got a he's got a thing. billion dollar budget for yeah. his next four films. So Mickey, it's crazy. Who knew Mickey was so greedy. Crazy. Oh boy, yeah. Pluto, we're gonna make a billion dollars. That was a little better. That oh, was that better. Yeah, that was okay. better. I'll work on it. I appreciate that one. I will work this out for our next podcast. Do it. I'll have a solid Mickey. Make it happen. There you go. So yeah. That's kind of it. Uh, any other news things? No, that's it. Right. I'm good. Well, we will go ahead and wrap up then. Let's wrap uh, it. I would love to hear people's thoughts. I'm going to put this at the beginning. I would love to hear people's thoughts on those news stories. Yeah. Uh, in particular, that Disney one, if you're just like flipping out about it, uh, definitely send us an email. I'm flipping out here. I'm flipping out. <laughs> uh, realreviewmedia at gmail.com. Nobody's ever, and I will say nobody's ever thought that Disney wasn't a big ginormous conglomerate of just trying to right. make a bunch of money. We kind of all know <laughs> Disney is like that at times, but mm-hmm. you know, still, still a lot of people love Disney. They yep. have good things. Uh, also, you can get connected with us, facebook.com slash real review media. Also, Instagram and Twitter, both at real review media. Um, check out our website as well, real We now lost, I probably, I just completely pushed away all of our Disney fan listeners that are out there. I love you, Disney. How dare you? Or they're, <laughs> or they're getting their lawyers ready yeah, yeah, to yeah. sue us. How dare you make us <laughs> sound bad on your podcast? Yep. You can so. just email Joel at realreviewmedia.com and uh, send all your complaints to him. No comment. Okay. There you go. That actually has, is a email address for me. So, All right. Anything else, Matt? <laughs> no. All right. Well, it's been real. It's been real.